Hello everyone, this is Rukshika Rajkumar from I Teach by R and today I'm here to explain you about the first section or the first topic in Edexcel IA of Physics 2018 specification. So the first topic will be working as a physicist and in this topic you'll be learning about the math skills required for physicists which is recognize and making use of appropriate units in calculations like knowing the difference between base and derived units, estimate results, like estimating the speed of waves on the sea, make order of magnitude calculations, like estimating approximately what an answer should be before you start calculating, including using standard form, use algebra to rearrange and solve equations, for example, finding the landing point of a projectile, Recognize the importance of the straight line graph as an analysis tool for the verification and development of physical laws of, by experimentation. For example, choosing appropriate values to plot to generate a straight line graph with experimental data. Determine the slope and intercept of a linear graph, for example, finding acceleration from a velocity to time graph. Calculating the area under the line on a graph and that's finding the energy stored in a stretched wire. You also learned to know how to use geometry and trigonometry, like finding the components of vectors. So now let's start off with the first section, which is standard units in physics. In this topic, you'll understand the distinction between base and derived quantities, and you'll also understand the idea of a fixed system of units, and you'll also learn how to explain the SI system. So to get an understanding about the base and direct quantities, let's start off with the length of a racetrack. And now let's consider the speed of a person running along the racetrack. To give the value of the speed, we have to consider a distance moved and the rate of motion over the distance. So we also need to measure the time and then do a calculation to obtain the value for speed. Now you can see there's a fundamental difference between the types of quantity that are length and speed. We call the length a base unit and the speed is a derived unit because you cannot measure the speed directly. To measure the speed, you'll be needing this length and the time. So in this equation, you can learn that length and time are base quantities whereas the speed is a derived quantity. So in total, there are around seven base units and all the other units are derived. Some derived units have their own names. For example, the derived unit of force should be kilogram meters per second squared. But this has been named the Newton after Sir Isaac Newton. Other derived units do not get their own names and we just list the base units that went together in deriving the quantity. For example, speed is measured in meters per second. So now let's list the seven basic quantities their names and their symbols. So here we have listed the seven base quantities which are mass, time, length, electric current, temperature, amount of substance, and light intensity. Now let's write down their unit names and their unit symbols. The unit name of mass is kilogram and it's written as kg. Of course, we have other units as well, like milligrams, grams, and tons. But the standard unit is kilogram and it's written as kg. And like we already saw in this equation, time is a base unit and it's measured in seconds. And the symbol can be written as s. We can measure time in minutes or hours, but the standard unit for measuring time is second. And that's the same for length as well. 
the standard unit for measuring length is meter and can be written as m and this is why speed is written as meters per second instead of kilometer per hour as that's the standard unit an electric current is measured in ampere which can be written as a capital a and the unit of temperature is kelvin which can be written as capital k the unit of this basic quantity amount of substance is mole and can be written as mol for those who have studied chemistry you would be familiar with the amount of substance and you would have done mole calculations and the standard unit for light intensity is candela and is written as cd so now let's refer to the derived units that have their own name Now let's write in their unit names, symbols, and their base units equivalent. So how do you calculate force? Force is equal to mass into acceleration. We've already seen that mass is a base quantity and Acceleration is a direct quantity as well, but we haven't uh, listed it here because it does not have its own name. Acceleration is speed divided by time. So we already know the standard unit of speed, which is meters per second. Acceleration is equal to meters per second squared. So force is equal to kilogram into meters per second squared and the base units equivalent is kilogram meter per second squared is work work is force into distance so we have already seen the base units equivalent of force so that into meters will give us kilogram meter per second squared power is equal to energy done divided by time taken so kilogram meter squared per second squared divided by time which is seconds will give us kilogram meter squared per second cubed frequency is equal to one over time so the base unit equivalent is equal to one over second which can be written as s to the power minus one Current is the rate of movement of charge over time. So to measure charge, we have to multiply electric current by time. So A into S will give us AS. To measure voltage, we have to divide power by current as P is equal to IV. We have to divide this unit by A. Resistance is equal to voltage divided by current as V is equal to IR and R is equal to V over I. So we have to divide this base unit equivalent by the unit of current. Now let's look at power prefixes as we'll be working with extremely large or small numbers. Scientists have made an easier system for writing such large values by adding a prefix to the unit which tells us that it has been multiplied by a very large or very small amount. So for example we have kilogram, milligram and gram. One kilogram is equal to thousand grams. In kilo the factor is 10 to the power 3. Now I'll be writing up the factors, their names and their symbols.
10 to the power 1 will give you deca 10 to the power 2 is hecto 10 to the power 3 is kilo 10 to the power 6 is mega giga will be used for 10 to the power 9 and terra will be used for 10 to the power 12 10 to the power 15 is peta 10 to the power 18 is exa 10 to the power 21 is zeta and 10 to the power 24 is yota 10 to the power minus 1 is deci that's why 1 meter is equal to 10 decimeter so you can compare this deci centi and milli with meter because meter is a standard si unit 10 to the power minus 2 is centi as 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeters and 1 centimeter is equal to 10 to the power minus 2 meters 10 to the power minus 3 is milli 10 to the power minus 6 is micro 10 to the power minus 9 is nano 10 to the power of minus 12 is pico, 10 to the power of minus 15 is femto, ato is 10 to the power of minus 18, zepto is 10 to the power of minus 21, and yocto is equal to 10 to the power of minus 24. So now that we have referred to the prefix used with SI units and the base and derived units, let's try some questions. So we are asked to uh, write 44 nanoseconds in standard form so as we've already referred here nano is 10 to the power minus 9 44 nanoseconds is equal to 44 into 10 to the power minus 9 seconds so you cannot leave it out like this to write this in standard form you have to write it as 4.4 into 10 to the power minus 8 seconds so that's all for today. If anyone has any questions or doubts with this topic, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a topic, explanation or problem solving video. Don't forget to comment, like and share. And I'll see you in the next video.